Welcome to Bible Study with the Elkins Park Presbyterian Church. I'm glad you've chosen to join us. This is our fifth and final video in our series on stewardship. Starting next week, we will be gathering again online for video Bible study for a series through the seasons of Advent and Christmas. As today we turn to our reading from Scripture and begin our study, please join me in prayer. Almighty God, at the season of Thanksgiving, when we are grateful for all that we have, we acknowledge that all we have comes from you. When we feel that we do not have enough, we ask, Lord, that you provide. When we are blessed with an abundance, Lord, we ask that you make us aware of the needs of those around us so we can respond and share from the bounty. Lord, as we talk about stewardship, as we open scripture, as we discuss how best to preserve and cultivate what we have and to live in a state of gratitude, guide us through the presence of your Holy Spirit to not only learn from your word, but to put those lessons into action to best reflect the love of Christ to the world. We ask this all giving thanks in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, in Lesson 5 in our series on stewardship, we're going to focus on the stewardship of our faith. I invite you to hear these words written in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1-15. through 15. The Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods, which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. For everything God created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. If you point these things out to the brothers and sisters, you will be a good minister of Christ Jesus, nourished on the truths of the faith and of the good teaching that you have followed. Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. This is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. That is why we labor and strive, because we have put our hope in the living God, who is the Savior of all people, and especially of those who believe. Command and teach these things. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift, which was given you through prophecy when the body of elders laid hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them, so that everyone may see your progress. Now, these words are written from Paul to Timothy. Timothy is probably in his early 30s. He's in this first generation of those trained by the original apostles and original eyewitnesses of Jesus's life, now sent out as that second generation of believers to preach and teach the good news of Jesus Christ as Savior, empowered by the Holy Spirit and equipped by this mentorship of their fellow Christians. So Timothy is not only chronologically young, but he's seen as being young in his faith, still maturing in his faith development. But Paul does not want him to be discouraged just because he's still listening. The same way as you would intern and maybe be a resident in a hospital if you're becoming a doctor, be an apprentice at a certain craft. When you're learning and working alongside a mentor, it doesn't mean you're inadequate. It simply means you're learning and developing. You're growing in your skill set. You're becoming an expert. So when your mentor or teacher or leader steps away, you can take over with the same level of skill and expertise or maybe even better. So Timothy now is out and about 
preaching, teaching, sharing scripture, helping churches to grow, evangelizing, talking about missionary work, doing fundraising, equipping others to be elders and deacons and preachers and pastors and teachers. And as he does this, Paul reinforces to him that he has everything that he needs. He has the most important gift. He has faith in Jesus Christ as his savior. We've been talking in this series about stewardship, about preserving something that's important, protecting something and cultivating it, being a good steward of what we have. So to be a good steward of our faith, Paul teaches Timothy, you have to practice. You have to live it out. To steward something does not mean to close it up in a sealed container and hide it away from the world. No, to steward something means to take care and preserve it and cultivate it in a way that it can fulfill its utmost purpose. So if we're stewarding our finances, it means we are being appropriately fiscally conservative when we need to, taking some risk at other times. We are keeping enough money so that we are taking care of what we're sharing if we have a surplus. If we're being a steward of our relationships, we're ensuring that we don't betray or stab in the back any of our friends or family members. We're making sure that we show love in reciprocal ways, that we openly communicate and show respect, that we serve as well as lead in our community, in our workplace, in our household. So when you're stewarding something, you're ensuring that that thing, idea, person, object, whatever it is you're stewarding, can fulfill its purpose to its utmost capacity and ability. So for Timothy, he needs to be a good steward of his faith. And Paul says to do that, you need to preach. You need to teach. You need to get out there and build relationships and see people and sit with them and pray with them and talk with them. You need to go door to door canvassing, figuring out who needs to hear about Jesus. You need to sit with church leaders as they wrestle with leadership positions and authority and discipline and accountability and forbearance. You need to sit with people new in the faith, maybe those who are seeking to be baptized, as they imagine what life will be like as a Christian and kind of evaluate if that's what they want, if that's where they feel called, if they can publicly affirm that faith. Timothy needs to sit with those who are his elders, those who maybe walked with Jesus or were eyewitnesses or ear witnesses of things he preached and did during his earthly ministry. He needs to sit at their feet and listen and absorb and learn and ask questions and follow up and then model his behavior after the qualities of their faith that he sees. Paul says to Timothy, do not let anyone discourage you because you are just figuring this out. Because all of us are just figuring this out. No matter our age, no matter if we are cradle Christians who have been with Christians in our lives since the moment we were born, or if we became a Christian four or five decades into our life, no matter if we have doubts and fears right now, or we're skeptical about the church in this time and place, we might be super excited about our faith, about our ministry, about our church, about our mission work. We might feel bored or disconnected from it. However we feel, wherever we are today in our faith journey, if we're going to be a steward of our faith, Paul instructs Timothy and us to ensure that we're doing just that, protecting, preserving, and cultivating our faith so our faith can be good. This lesson opens with Paul reminding Timothy that God created everything, and everything God created is good. So even our stumbles, even when we put our foot in our mouth, even when we're learning and we're not quite an expert yet, when we're trying, when we're kind of feeling our way through the darkness of how are we called, where are we led, where can we best be used in the church by the Holy Spirit, even in that development and discovery phase, we are stewarding our faith. And faith is something that progresses. Faith is not a final point. You don't become a Christian and then stop. You don't get baptized and say, oh, I'm good, on with the rest of my life. You don't join a church and then never show up again. No. 
There are multiple ways to grow, to be shepherded, to shepherd others, to foster your own faith, to cultivate faith in others, to work alone in small groups in the entire congregation, in your larger community, in the body of Christ in the world, to cultivate and be a good steward of your faith. That faith will hopefully look different across your lifetime. If your faith is getting stagnant, then we need to reevaluate and readdress what's going on with us and our relationship with God. Each time a new member joins our congregation, we encourage everyone who's a current member to kind of reassess their own faith. This opportunity to be reminded of that moment when we said publicly, I affirm that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and I want to follow him. I want to reject sin and choose God and do that with these people in this place here and now. That reminds us when we see someone else do it that we have done that too. And it allows us to reassess, kind of take inventory of, of how's our faith. If I was asked today to stand up and say that, if I was asked those three questions, who is your Lord and Savior, would I answer Jesus Christ? If I was asked to renounce evil and its power in the world, would I say, yes, I renounce evil and I choose God? And if I was asked, will I be a faithful servant to God at this time in history with these people in this particular congregation, could I answer yes? And if any of those answers are wavering or not yes and affirmative, or if we're just kind of feeling like we're saying what we're supposed to say, that's kind of a self-check moment. Are we being a good steward of our faith? If we are being a good steward of our faith, great, continue. But if we're struggling, we need to look for resources. We start in prayer, just saying to God, now I need some help with this. Then we look to our peers, our friends, those who sit in the pews with us in worship. We look to our pastor, our elders, other mentors in our family, maybe family that worship elsewhere or friends who worship at other churches. We can go and look at online resources like this video. We can look at devotional books. If you journal, if you keep a diary, maybe you go back and read about other times in your life when you were faithful. Maybe when you volunteered to serve on a church committee or when you stepped up to be an elder. Maybe when you were confirmed or had your child baptized even when you were married within a church or when you buried a relative and had a worship service to celebrate their life and faith and witness. If we're going to steward our faith, just like we're going to be good stewards of anything we are entrusted with, we can't ignore it. We can't just put it on a shelf and worry about it if it comes up. We need to constantly be cultivating and active and participating in our faithful relationship, not only with God, but with one another in the body of Christ open to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for joining me for this lesson, our fifth video in our series on stewardship. If you miss any of the previous videos or want to watch them again, they're available on YouTube and Facebook if you search for the Elkins Park Presbyterian Church. Also, you can find them on the media tab on our church website at eppchurch.org. The Elkins Park Presbyterian Church worships at 10.30 a.m. every Sunday morning here in person. And we record our worship services also for later online broadcast. You are welcome to join us here in Elkins Park, Pennsylvania. We love to see and hear from you. And if you are farther away than just traveling on Sunday morning easily to be with us, please reach out, send us an email, make a phone call, let us know that you're part of our greater community, the greater body of Christ, even outside of our geographic neighborhood. Thank you, and I look forward to having you join us for our next video series as well.